Welcome back again for Mune's Gaming. Uh, I'm your host, Mune, and uh, today I'm actually going to be reviewing over a deck that I personally made uh, for the Y Schwartz card game. Um, it's a really great game. Uh, it's from Japan, and it started back in 2009, if I remember correctly. Uh, maybe even 2008. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I was first introduced to the game when I found it online back in 2010. It was a wonderful time uh, because the uh, Disgaea uh, English Trial Deck was released uh, by Nippon Aichi Software, and I bought it up. I also bought a few other things uh, at the time. I was really excited about the game, and I completely had supported it for a number of years uh, here in the U.S., and I really wanted it to be spread, and it didn't really start picking up until they started releasing more stuff in English, uh, which kind of surprised me. But those sets that started coming out were like Madoka Magica, you know, Fate Zero. Uh, I'm trying to remember the other set. Uh, yeah, I don't even remember. Dang, it's been a while. <laughs> but uh, they didn't really release any booster boxes or booster packs or anything like that, which really killed its ability to function for a good while. Uh, and then they, they started releasing more and more and more, and start, finally starting to pick up a lot of momentum in the last, you know, two years, uh, which I'm really exciting, uh, excited about. Uh, as you can kind of see up here, I do have a few things that are Japanese in nature, but you will notice that I do have, right here, the Fate Zero English Edition box. Uh, I really love that set, but uh, nothing has really come of it. Uh, I got rid of all of the cards except for my foil that I pulled, which was really awesome, but that's not what I'm talking about today. Today, I'm actually going to talk about a set that came out a little bit later than that, uh, and I felt I, there was a lot of potential in it. I've not been keeping up with it, unfortunately, mainly because of financial reasons and also because I cannot find anybody to really play against in my area. That is the downside of playing this game in the Midwest. Unfortunately, I'm also in the process of getting ready to move here in the next uh, two months, and I'm still going to be uh, doing what I always do and going to uh, Anime Iowa again this year. Uh, haven't decided if I actually want to run tournaments again. I did it in the years past, and people tended to love them, but the major problem was is that there were v very few people who wanted to, like, play the game. I think I ran tournaments, we had, like, six or seven people. It was the biggest turnout I've ever had. Uh, and it, I really wanted it to be a little bit more fun. But do the important things. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go over the deck, uh, which is a Sword Art Online deck. Um, I used only Volumes 1 and 2, so and the Trial deck. Uh, I think for this deck in particular, I decided to cut all of the Trial deck stuff out because... Uh, I want to do mono color, and I'm playing mono red. Uh, as you can about imagine, mono red is very powerful in Y Schwartz, uh, especially in Sword Art Online, but I don't play the meta. That is the biggest problem that people see with this. They're like, oh, if you're playing the meta, you have to run the level zero, uh, level one uh, counter card of a, uh, Asuna, uh, you have to run Silica, you, you need to run all these important cards, they're essential. I don't, and I do pre pre pretty well. Um, I ran a version of this deck, with which was blue, red, uh, during the World Grand Prix uh, about a year and a half ago, and uh, I would have gotten second place, except for that I mislabeled uh, my deck list a little bit by not putting in quantities for two cards. So, my loss... I, didn't, I ended up getting third place. It kind of sucked. Uh, but that's what happens when you don't do that right. So, without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and start with our climaxes and work our ways up to level three. So, like I said, no, I'm not really playing with Silica, so you can about imagine the only other red character in Y Schwartz, uh, you know, for Sword Art Online, and that is Lisbeth, uh, or Rika uh, Shinazaki. So, our first card is, uh, back to her cheerful self. Alright, uh, it is, uh, climax with two, uh, soul trigger, and when you play this, uh, 
all your characters get plus two soul. So pretty useful. I'm running four of these this card uh, in my deck mainly because there are very few Lisbeth cards out there, and this just works out better in my deck. And then the other climax I'm running is Awakened Feelings. All right, uh, another two soul trigger uh, when this card is placed on your climax area from your hand, you may put the top card of your deck into your stock, and all of your characters get plus one soul until end of turn. Uh, you may be asking, why am I not running uh, Sought Warmth? Uh, and the reason behind that is Sought Warmth is the climax combo for a particular Lisbeth, and I don't really like that com climax combo simply because it gets kind of in the way and it just doesn't work out very well. I love the picture of the card. I love, you know, the effect. It's just that it does, just does not fit in this uh, deck. And even the trigger doesn't work for me because I, I've ran into way too many decks that are just like, we're anti-door. We're going to deal with this. And I call it door because it looks like a door. And in Y Schwartz, they do, they do not call it a gate. The gates look different than the doors. And the gates are newer. So, just pointing that out. Alright. Our next card is Rika Shinozaki. Alright. She's a level 0. 2,000 power. Uh, has an auto ability where you can pay to. When this card is placed from your waiting room to, uh, from the stage, uh, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose an avatar or net character in your waiting room and return it to your hand. So it's kind of a salvage ability when it's destroyed. And I'm running four of her because... Wow, that's a great ability, especially if you want a higher level character or combo character. So, very useful. Or even just trying to get bodies on the field. <laughs> and you have an abundance of stock. Alright, our next level zero is Realization of Love, Lisbeth. She is 2,500 power. When this card attacks, if the card back to her cheerful self is in your climax area, put the top three cards of your deck into your waiting room. If all of those cards are avatar or net characters, choose a character in your waiting room and return it to your hand. So like Rika Shinozaki, she brings back characters, but at a cost. And you have to mill the top part of your deck to make it work. The downside is, is if you mill Climax cards, you're going to be really regretting it. So it's kind of a risk that you're going to have to try to play with. Our next level zero is Lisbeth's Material Gathering Adventure. It is a 3,000 power vanilla. Uh, vanilla just basically means no abilities, and it's, I love this quote on this card, huh, as being, huh, for vanilla, because a lot of people don't know what that actually means. It's kind of funny. Uh, but if you're new to the game, then vanilla just means no abilities. If you're familiar, you're probably familiar with the term. Alright, awesome. So, next card. Lisbeth the Blacksmith. Uh, 500 power. Uh, has a constant assist. All the characters in front of this card get plus 500 power. And then has an auto ability to uh, go ahead and rest this character. Uh, when you use an accelerate ability, you can go from a standing position to a rest position. And if you do... Choose one of your characters, and that character gets plus 1,500 until end of turn. Really useful with the uh, level 0 rare, uh, which I no longer have, but it does wonders. You, you could really pump a character really quick to uh, overcome that, just about anything with that. Accelerate basically means you take the top card of your deck and put it into your clock uh, as an ability. But this card does not have Accelerate itself, so... Yeah, it just kind of goes with that. All right, next I'm going to go to the level ones. Uh, I have, eh, I'm going to say roughly close to about the same number of level ones, maybe a little bit less. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start off with Mace User Lisbeth. Okay, uh, five thousand power has no cost, so she's just a regular level one. Has ability auto, uh, cost one. When this card attacks, if a card named Awakened Feelings is in the Climax area, you may pay the cost. If you do, all of your weapons or weapon characters uh, get plus 2500 power until end of turn. 
that's really great, especially if you're having trouble getting over uh, opponents. It gives everybody plus 2,500. Not the best combo in the game, but definitely up there for this type of deck. Uh, and Waken Feelings is just one of the climaxes. It's right on top there. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a new stack. So these are all the level zeros. Uh, just leave that there for now. Uh, our next card is Encouraging Lisbeth. It's a uh, 6,500 power, cost one to play, and has a change ability. Uh, so you can pay two. Uh, put a card from your hand into your waiting room and put this card into your waiting room. At the beginning of your climax phase, you may pay this cost. If you do, choose a card named Lisbeth's Positive Smile in your waiting room and put it in uh, on the same stage position that this card was on. Uh, I'm running four of her simply because it's really useful to do it. Um, I'll show you what card it changes into in a little bit. It's a level two character. Really great. Uh, and then my last level one is a level one, uh, one cost. It's Lisbeth being mean. 2,000 power. Uh, she has the backup ability, which you basically can play this on your opponent's turn when they attack. Uh, you pay one, give one of your uh, front characters, or, yeah, uh, plus 2,000 power. So, yeah, this is really useful. Uh, great for dealing with those pesky overpowering decks on their turn. So we're going to go ahead and go to the level twos. I have quite a few here, and some of them are really weird. Um, so, first one's first. I'm going to go ahead and show the one that has the change ability. Um, that is Lisbeth's Positive Spile. Uh, it costs two. It's 9,500. 9, Pretty powerful. Uh, when this card is placed on the stage from your hand, reveal the top card of your deck. Uh, if the reveal card is a climax card, uh, you have to rest this character. Uh, and then you just put the card back uh, on the top of the deck. Uh, the biggest problem with this is if you're playing it from your hand, it's very risky. If you change into it, you don't have to activate this ability. So it's really great. It's more or less uh, like a vanilla. It has that soul trigger, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, I'm only running three of it simply because uh, far less reason to play it from my hand. I have better cards to play anyway. Oops, wrong stack. Uh, stack over here. Okay. Our next level two. Actually, I'm move it over a little bit more. Okay. Next level two is Ceasefire Agreement Rika. Uh, 7,500, uh, one cost. Has an accelerate ability. So, combos with a level zero. Uh, put the top card of your deck into your clock at the beginning of your climax phase. You may pay the cost. If you do, choose an avatar or net character in your waiting room and return it to your hand. So, this is like the salvage ability, except you're not really using salvage. Okay? Or the door ability, technically. So, yeah. Uh, really great, solid level two. I definitely like it. And I'm running four of it. Uh, our next level two is a Lisbeth Gentle Warmth. Uh, cost you 9,000 vanilla. Uh, I'm running three of her because she's kind of fun to use. Uh, but that's the end of her. Uh, she's really great, but we're going to go ahead and jump to the last level two I have in the deck, which is Lisbeth's Determined Confession. Uh, 4,000 power, one cost, uh... Has an assist, all characters in front of this one get plus X power. X is equal to the uh, 500 multiplied by that character's level. So if she were in the front row, she'd be getting an extra 1,000 power. Uh, if one of her was behind her. But unfortunately, I'm only running one of her. So uh, if it was behind a level 3, they'd get plus 1,500, which is also really great. Then she has an auto ability that costs 2. When this card is placed on the stage from your hand you may pay the cost. If you do, choose a character in your waiting room and return it to your hand. So another salvage-like ability without actually being salvage, which is really strange, um, but really great. I really like this card, and I know they have signed ones out there. I just haven't got my hands on them. I wouldn't mind them, but hey, beggars can't be choosers, right? So anyway, moving on, level three. Okay, Elizabeth, at this point, as far as I know, only has one level three, um, which is 
Lisbeth's Shining Smile. Alright, it's 10,000 power, cost 2, it's a level 3. <coughs> Ooh, sorry. Um, uh, first auto ability. When this card is placed on the stage from your hand, look at the top card of your deck and put it on the top of your deck or into your waiting room. Great if you see a character card on the top of your deck and you really don't want it. Alright, uh, bad if you are planning on waiting it out and if there's like a climax on top. And you're just like, well, whatever. <laughs> Alright, uh, next one, auto ability is when this card is placed on the stage from your hand. This card gets plus X power until end of turn, where X is equal 500, multiply the number of, of avatar and net characters that you have. So, potentially up to, you know, uh, another 2,500. All right, and then the last auto ability costs one. During your turn, when this card's battled opponent becomes reversed, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your opponent's level two or lower characters on the center stage and put it on the top of your opponent's deck, more or less ensuring that you hit a character rather than a climax. Really great for that last end game stuff. All right, so that's my level threes. I'm running three of them. Uh, might be a little bit crazy, but I don't think running more than three of any card, uh, sorry, any more than, like, four of a level three is a really wise choice. Uh, I hear about people playing with decks that have, I'm gonna say, like, ten or more level threes with, ex with the expectation that they're gonna be at level three very quickly. And then I even change the level threes, they're just level threes, and they all heal, and just looks like... Why? Why would you even bother? At that point, I'd be like, just shake your head. You know, you have a better chance of running more level, lower level cards and winning than running higher level cards. Truth be told, I, it doesn't even matter if they stay on the field. If you're suiciding in and you're dealing damage, that is fine. You know, and that is the biggest strategy that there is. If you're aggressive in the way you play, you will most guaranteedly win, which is really scary. You know, that's how I nabbed, like, uh, an almost second place at a World Grand Prix, you know, uh, regional, is because of that. Because people don't expect it. They think it's going to be a strategic card game. That's all it is. And it's like, no, you can be aggressive, you can be super aggressive, and just plow through them, and every card game's got decks like it. Magic's got them in red deck wins, or even red creature wins, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, burning creatures. Um... And then even decks in other card games, like Pokemon's got them, you know, Dragon Ball Z's got them, you Hawkshow's got them, Yu-Gi-Oh's got them, you know, you name a card game, they have them. It's just that people don't like to talk about them because they always have that, the strange mentality that there's some perfect game that requires a lot of strategic moves. The strategic moves happens way before you even actually get to playing your opponent. It starts when you're building your deck, and that's the way I like it. And the trick with building a deck is you always build it the way you want, and don't be ashamed to play the way you want. You know, my decks are all built the way I want. I saw the cards, I built it. I don't go to other people saying, well, this only works with this. This is the, the meta. This is the way it works. No, I just build it the way I want, and that's how I end up doing well. And it's trial and error a lot of times. Sometimes I'll lose horribly. But more on that at another time. All right. So thank you for watching, and hopefully it was an enjoyable vi video. And who knows? Maybe I'll do another deck review. Maybe I'll do a box break at another time. Who knows? Pay attention. Uh, hopefully everything comes up at all nice, and, you know, it'll be lots of fun. Um, I know I'm considering buying the Disgaea English sets in a few weeks. Uh, and if I do, it'll probably be a big break. But uh, you'll just have to wait and see. Alright, thank you for watching and stay tuned for additional videos.